So I got this package in the mail today, and it weighs friggin' 10 pounds, and I'm like, what the heck could this be? And then I remembered, oh yeah, it is a lead-acid battery that I bought for something. So, uh, let's open it up and take a look. So here is the battery. It's a 12-volt, 10 amp hour, sealed lead-acid battery. And I bought it from this website, upsbatterycenter.com because they were literally the only people I could find who sold this type of battery that I needed. And uh, I bought this battery actually for my jumper pack. I made a video about it a few years ago. I have a jumper pack that has an internal lead acid battery and in that video I filmed I made an attempt to revive the battery. Um, at that time the jumper pack was about eight years old and the battery had finally reached end of life. I made an attempt to refill the cells with water. I did that but the battery didn't come back to life. It had a bad cell and so that was the end of that. So I still have the jumper pack but it's been dormant for the past three years, four years since then because I just never bothered to get a new battery for it. I figured I would either hack it up and steal the inverter from it to make a standard inverter or I would just end up throwing the whole thing away but I decided um, the other week to um, buy a new battery for it since it's still a perfect working jumper pack and it's in great shape and at the very least I'll probably see if I can flip the jumper pack for a profit um, just because I don't really um, I, I I don't terribly want it. It is useful to me, but here's the thing. I'd kind of like to get a new jumper pack. Um, there's one they sell at Canadian Tire. It's a $300 unit, but sometimes it goes on sale for $150, $160. Um, it was on sale over Christmas, and I almost entertained the thought of getting it, but I never did. And then the sale ended after after New Year's. So... Um, but I'd almost want to get one, I think, next time they go on sale. So what I'd like to do is see if I can flip my jumper pack, um, get a hundred bucks for it or something, of course touting it that it has a brand new battery, and um, use that money towards buying a new jumper pack. Um, it's 12 years old now, but like I said, I've it's in perfect shape. I only ever used it for the 12 volt cigarette lighter socket and the inverter was only used a few times in 12 years and I think it only jumped mum's car twice in 12 years and uh, I think the last time it jumped a car it was it was already six or seven years old so it's it's quite um, impressive that at that age with the original battery it was able to do that but here's the weird thing though, the jumper pack used a 14 amp hour battery, but if you look here, this is only 10 amp hours. But I could not for the life of me find a battery of this shape and size, almost at all, let alone one that was 14 amp hours. The closest I came was this one, which is 10 hours, which I think is the exact correct size. Um, the big challenge was finding ones that had these... Um, nut and bolt connectors on them rather than the small um, FB type connectors that small lead acid batteries usually have. But something I know about the jumper packs, at least the ones that Canadian Tire sells, is that they use the absolute cheapest garbage batteries that they can find to put in them. Um, and as a, matter, as a matter of fact, just about every jumper pack sold on Canadian Tire's website except for maybe the DeWalt units um, they all have poor ratings because um, they're unusable after a year or two because the battery goes bad. Despite that, they're otherwise very robust units. So I'm kind of impressed that mine lasted for like seven or eight years before the battery went bad. Because um, normally they only have a lifespan of a year or two. And this is just sitting on standby like mine always did, not in heavy use or whatever. And... Honestly, I think I probably abused mine quite a bit because I would run the, I ran the battery completely down a couple of times, which is something you're definitely not supposed to do. But anyway, they use the very cheapest batteries that they can find for, and the battery, the original battery in mine was branded Coo Power, C-O-O -O Power. 
um, which is just a hilariously third-rate Chinese name, but the battery that was in it, they rated 14 amp hours. And as a matter of fact, I once found a white paper from Xantrex, who are the makers of my jumper pack, and I can only assume, based on what I've seen, that Xantrek also manufactures Canadian Tire's own brand of jumper pack. I found a white paper about replacing the battery in various models of Xantrek jumper pack. It didn't include mine, but it included a bunch of others, and they actually say in the white paper, oh, the high capacity battery in your jumper pack isn't available on the retail market, and it suggested several lower capacity batteries um, to put in its place. So like for a jumper pack that had a 22 amp hour battery, it was suggesting like batteries that were 17 to 18 amp hours in capacity. So my guess is, is because they're using such garbage batteries in these jumper packs, I'm thinking the batteries are overrated probably. Um, these third rate manufacturers making these batteries are way overrating them. Um, so even though this is only a 10 amp hour battery and the original was 14, I wouldn't be surprised if this has as much or even more capacity than the original battery um, that came in the jumper pack. This is a Chinese battery. I can only guess that UPS Battery Center doesn't make their own batteries. They probably rebrand other people's batteries, but um, they're a website dedicated to um, selling lead acid batteries for UPS as a course. This would normally be used as a UPS battery. But uh, hopefully that means, and you know they're an American company, hopefully it means that they um, choose half decent batteries. Now, I'm going to multimeter here. I'm going to test the voltage of this just to make sure it's okay. It is very cold right now. It just came in out of the cold, so it is actually frozen. So if the voltage is less than a okay I won't worry too much hopefully it's above 12 volts and yes it is that is excellent good I'm satisfied with that so uh, let me get out the jumper pack and we'll take a look at that I've never really shown my jumper pack in detail before and here's the patient but first of all a couple other points I forgot about the battery um, this was hella expensive. I paid $70 for this, which is why I'm going to try and get hopefully $100 for the jumper pack. But yeah, this is really expensive. It was expensive for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, it's an American company, of course, and the shipping to Canada. A battery like this normally only costs $30 or $40, but they were shipping to Canada, which was really expensive. That was the bulk of it. And, um where it's sort of an uncommon and special type with those uh, connectors on it. So that adds a bit on the price, but yeah, I think aside from the unit price, it was the shipping to Canada that made up the bulk of the difference. Um, Canada Post has changed shipping guidelines for batteries, and it's now super complicated to mail batteries to Canada. Um, you go on digikey.com and they sell tons of like lithium ion batteries, 18650s and the like. But when you go to digikey.ca, they don't sell any lithium ion batteries. They won't sell them anymore cuz it's too much work and expense to ship them. Um it's so hard to buy lithium ion or even elemental lithium batteries anymore um in Canada. And apparently that um is the same for lead acid batteries too, because like Digikey also sells lead acid batteries. Um, and I looked at other companies as well, and in all these cases, there's lots of them on the US sites. And on the Canadian site, there's just nothing or next to nothing. And sort of insulting is I'm remembering one website I looked on looking for a battery like this. The website is like, oh yeah, we ship to 30 different countries or whatever. Um, and Canada was in the list of countries they shipped to, but when you selected a battery and go to the checkout, you get a message, oh, sorry, we no longer ship to Canada. Oh my goodness, I think that's super stupid. How, how are you supposed to buy batteries anymore? It's so expensive. Same for photographic chemicals too. I, I bought some equipment so I can start developing my own color film, 35 millimeter film. And it's super hard to get the chemicals now. 
In the, if you live in the U.S., you can get the chemicals for 15 bucks shipped. In Canada, it's $60 to get the same $15 item into Canada. It is outrageous. I think it's totally unfair. And I think something ought to change because it's just ridiculous. But at any rate, this battery cost me $70. They also sent it with a little baggie of hardware, screws and, well, bolts, I guess, nuts and bolts. So uh, I've already got the nuts and bolts in this thing that the original battery attached with. Um, but in case those don't work, we have other ones here, so we're good to go. So on to the jumper pack itself. This is a Xantrex X-Power Power Pack 300 jumper pack. I got this as a gift for my 12th birthday. Yep, that's the kind of kid I was. Um, yeah, I got this on my 12th birthday and I was just over the freaking moon because I had wanted one of these for a long time. Um, back in the early 2000s when um, jumper packs with built-in 120 volt inverters started becoming a thing and Canadian Tire started selling them, um, my grandfather got one. He got a Motomaster Eliminator Power Box 600, so a bit fancier unit with a 600 watt inverter. And I was just blown away. Well, I've always said, I'm a fan of portable anything. Portable audio, portable video, um, uh, portable anything. And that certainly includes portable power. And um, uh, yeah, I was just, you know, and of course my grandfather um, was into tech. He didn't, always, he didn't always know what he was doing with it, but he certainly loved it. And when he got that, that jumper pack, he... Uh, he gave me the grand tour of it and demonstrated it working and I was just blown away. I would have been 10 or 11 years old. And so I knew I definitely wanted a, a jumper pack. Might not have been able to put it to use for anything, but um, I wanted it nonetheless. It was just so cool. So um, my dad got me this for my 12th birthday, 2006. And um, I have sort of a funny story to tell. Um, this isn't the original one he got, it's the same one, but it's actually a second one. What happened was, when I got it for my birthday, and I went through the motions, set it up, plugged it into charge, I read the manual, and the manual was like, oh yeah, you know, the inverter has overload protection, if you overload the inverter, um, it automatically shuts down. Great, and that's, that was actually, my grandfather actually demonstrated on his Eliminator power box. Um, he had a big, at the time, like 32 or 40 inch CRT television. Um, and he plugged it into the inverter and when he tried turning on the TV, uh, the inverter shut down. Exactly as one would expect. Too much power. And uh, this thing purportedly had the same thing. So when I got this on my birthday, I decided to test it, just, just for kick, see how it worked. And I plugged a 1000 watt heater into the inverter and I turned the inverter on. Uh, there was a buzzing noise for a couple of seconds and then a loud bang, like a gunshot. And uh, sort of a, a smell after that. And um, the inverter was dead. The inverter was destroyed. That was the end of it. Um, other parts still work. The, the light on it, the cigarette lighter adapter. Um, it otherwise still worked, but the inverter was just destroyed. There was the end of it and I was mortified because this was a brand new item not very cheap that I just got for my birthday and so I think I kept it from my dad for a few hours and eventually I just broke down hysterically and and told him what had happened and of course he was very angry um, but nonetheless, he returned it. He returned it as a um, as a non-working item. Just said, got it, and the inverter didn't work. Um, you can hold your opinion, whatever you want, of whether that was orthodox or not. It was 12 years ago. I certainly don't care. Um, he returned it and exchanged it for another one, and I never did anything like that ever again. So this is the unit that we exchanged for after I accidentally blew up the inverter on the first one. So I learned my lesson there. So despite what Xantrex says right in the manual, I still have the manual for this thing and I've checked it multiple times over the years. It explicitly says the inverter is overload protection. It does not. There is no overload protection of any kind. So I think that's quite sleazy. Um, 
Xantrex to me never seemed to make the highest quality of stuff, but um, they seem to be decent nonetheless. But um, I think that's kind of sleazy that they purport a um, inverter overload protection and it turns out not to be the case. At any rate, let's take a look at this thing. So there it is. And this thing, um, you know, in my first several years on YouTube, this thing actually served a very important purpose. I used the cigarette lighter jack a lot to power stuff that I'd gotten that required a cigarette lighter adapter. Um, so it was very useful for me in many of my YouTube videos. So we'll take a look here. That's how you check the battery level. Lights will light up to indicate the status of charge. There you plug in your, your charger, just a standard 13.5 volt AC adapter. Uh, when you hook up the jumper cables, which are right here, um, if you've hooked it up wrong, the light called incorrect will uh, light up and it'll beep. And there's your cigarette lighter socket and a light that shows you when the battery's done charging. When you plug it in to charge, it has a maximum current output of like an amp or something to charge the battery or two amps or something like that and then once the battery's fully charged um, which is 14.0 14.1 volts it um, stops charging and trickle charges it with a current of one milliamp and if the battery voltage drops below 12.7 volts it'll restart the full charging current there's a flashlight right there. The um, cigarette lighter is hardwired to the battery. There's no switch for it, although it is fused with a 15 amp automotive fuse, which is right there. And there's the inverter, 300 watts peak, 240 watts continuous. And um, I'm sort of surprised. This was like a bottom of the barrel jumper pack at the time. Um, 300 watt inverter. You know, you could get better ones with 400, 600, um, really big ones with like a 1200 watt inverter that you could run like a refrigerator and stuff off of. But I recently looked at Canadian Tire's website and their cheapest, so this was like the cheapest inverter they had at Canadian Tire at the time. Well, the cheapest one they have now is a tiny rinky dink unit with a 120 watt inverter with a single outlet. Kind of interesting. The jumper leads are sort of impressive on this. They've got a nice gauge of wire. I don't know if um, I don't know if it says the wire gauge anywhere, but it's pretty good. I've seen. I mean, it's not the thickest stuff in the world. I I would say that's probably 10 or 12 gauge. I've seen jumper packs that have smaller gauge wire. Um, I recently watched a video from Ave of a. Um, it was a re review of a Dewalt battery charger that plugs into the wall um, and it had an 80 amp jump start capability and the wires were you, you, you know they were quite thin thinner than this actually I think that was 12 or 14 gauge so I'm thinking this is probably 8 or 10 but they um they reel up nicely so they stow away pretty easily so let me fix that there's a big beefy switch right here that connects the jumper leads to the battery. When it's turned to the off position, the jumper leads are disconnected from the internal battery. And you can actually, when you connect the jumper leads to a battery, um, you can actually run the jumper pack off the external battery. Xantrex actually meant for you to do that. It's stated in the manual. So even though there's no battery in this, I can actually still use this by connecting the jumper leads um, to another battery. As a matter of fact, I'll demonstrate that right now with this battery like that a little bit precarious you can see the the uh, correct light lights up and if we press the battery check level oh I get to turn the switch on first and that's how much the battery's charged and the light and the inverter perfect Jumper packs are, have, of course, evolved a lot now. Um, even the cheapest units now, they have a USB port on them to charge your phone or whatever. I think that's very nice. And the standard incandescent flashlight has been replaced with LEDs. I think that's just fine as well. And, of course, now you can buy the, um, 
the fancy pants lithium ion jump starters um, that have a tiny lithium ion or lithium polymer or whatever battery pack and they're just as powerful or more powerful as a standard lead acid battery based jumper pack. They really are impressive. You pay the price for them, they're far more expensive than something like this, but they're really nice, you can just keep them in your glove box. Um, but of course, one issue is those units don't have any other features, they don't have a cigarette lighter socket, they don't have an inverter. Um, they usually have a little LED light on them, but that's it. So, if you want something full featured, you're still going to get one of these with the old fashioned lead acid battery in them. Um, Interestingly, there's a rechargeable battery technology. Some of you might have heard of it, some of you might not. It's called lithium iron phosphate, and the abbreviation is L-I-F-E-P-O-4. Lithium iron phosphate. Not ion, iron, as in the, the, uh, the stuff pots and pans are made out of. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are very cool. Um, you may wonder why isn't a big jumper pack like this use a lithium ion battery and the reason is you can't make a suitable 12 volt battery with a lithium ion um, battery pack. Um, the best you can get is a 3 cell series pack which has a nominal voltage of 10.8 volts I think and then a full charge voltage of 12.8 volts or a 4 cell pack which has a nominal voltage of I think 14.4 volts and then a full charge voltage of like 16 volts or something so you can't really get that sweet spot it's either too much or too little but lithium iron phosphate batteries have a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts per cell not 3.7 volts so when you put four lithium iron phosphate cells in series you get a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts and a full charge voltage of I think 14.4 volts which is perfect so you put four um, lithium iron phosphate batteries in, in series and it's a perfect equivalent to a standard old-fashioned 12 volt battery and it turns out you can buy um, lithium iron phosphate battery packs in the same shape and size to replace a, a lead acid battery. You'll pay dearly for them. A battery, a lithium iron phosphate battery like this one will run you about $300. But um, I think once the technology comes down in price, which it most definitely is, I think lithium iron phosphate batteries will replace lead acid batteries. I sure hope that happens. I would like to see that happen. Um, I think it's kind of dumb that we're still using lead acid batteries. Um, Lead acid batteries are just, they're a crappy technology. They serve the purpose just fine, but you know, they go bad. They're, you can't discharge them all the way or they'll only last like a dozen charge cycles. Um, you know, treated well, you might get a hundred charge cycles out of one if you use it on a discharge charge basis. Um, you know, they're really only, they really only have a useful life if um if you treat them correctly they're not as versatile as a lithium based rechargeable battery um and so i think if lithium iron phosphate can come down in price um i think i i i think and hope that we'll see them start to replace lead acid batteries in things like jumper packs and even cars i would like to see that happen if i was rich i would have just gone ahead and bought a lithium iron phosphate battery for this thing or maybe not, because like I said, I want to get rid of it. But anyway, I think what we'll do next is I'm going to get a screwdriver and we will open this thing up and see if this battery fits and how it works. There are some specifications for the AC inverter. 240 watts continuous, 300 watts for 5 minutes, 480 watts surge. 15 amps maximum for the cigarette lighter socket and 14 amp hour AGM lead acid sealed non-spillable rated 140 cold cranking amps and um that's something I didn't know see I, I always thought I always thought you know you had lead acid batteries you had sealed lead acid batteries and I always thought the AGM batteries were this fancy expensive technology um, that you know increased service life because it didn't boil off the electrolyte 
um, as quickly. Um, but it turns out that sealed lead acid batteries, at least the ones made in the past many years, are AGM batteries. And actually, in the last video I made of this thing, where I tried to revive the original battery, um, people in the comments informed me that a sealed lead acid battery is an AGM battery. So, that's uh, fair enough, I guess. Um, maybe that's the white stuff I, that you can sometimes see inside the cells. Maybe that's the glass mat um, that they're talking about. But yeah, AGM battery. And actually, this one, I believe, says, yes, it says sealed AGM battery. So, fair enough. Um, I got the screws out, so let me get some stuff out of the way. And she opens up. Now I gotta be careful. Oh, you know what I should do? I should turn on the inverter because I do know that it keeps a stored charge in probably the capacitors. So let me hit the power switch and you'll hear it beep because it's given the low battery signal. There you go. That's discharged. Yeah, there it is. There's the inverter. Um, looks decent enough, I guess. There's the flashlight. Um, you don't have to open it up to replace the bulb. You can replace it from the front. Standard 12 volt flashlight bulb. And the battery connects to, there's the positive terminal. And there's the negative terminal. I've got them covered in electrical tape so that if I wanted to, I could use this thing connected to an external battery and there wouldn't be a risk of it shorting out. And, uh... Yeah, so what I am interested in, first thing, is um, does this fit? So I think it went something like that, and oh yes, that looks like an absolutely perfect fit. I think this is identical in size to the original battery. 10 amp hours, not 14. Um, I have a hard time believing that... Um, the original battery made by <laughs> the finest from Koo Power was 14 and this is only 10. I think Koo Power might have been operating their batteries a little bit. But yeah, that looks like the exact size, so that's excellent. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, um, I don't think I can do this off camera, but I'll install the battery, install the terminals, and then we'll come back. All right, about a half an hour of finagling later, the new battery is in. Oh, she's really heavy now. That works. That works. That works. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't catch any of the installation on video. I really just had to have 100% concentration. Um, I'm always a little bit nervous when I take a you know a high power battery capable of delivering a hundred amps or more of current and uh, having to screw you know a bolt through a nut and and make sure my screwdriver doesn't short across anything make sure the battery doesn't short across any of the internal electronics um, the terminals are kind of close together so I gotta make sure that one of those aren't gonna you know, one of the connectors I bolted on are going to flip around and short against the other. So I, I really just wanted to make doubly, triply sure that everything was going to be okay. And it everything turned out okay. So, uh, let's put this on the charger. And yes, the battery was an exact fit. So, if you ask me, I would say two thumbs up to UPS Battery Center. Um, yeah, uh, the battery was exactly what they said it would be. Um, granted I haven't tested the battery and I won't be because you can't really test a lead acid battery without discharging it all the way and I don't want to put a run it down like that and decrease its life. Um, but yeah, these guys, they ship to the US and to Canada, um, at least. And, um, yeah, the prices for their batteries were very good. You'll just pay for, you'll pay a lot for shipping to Canada if you're in Canada, but yeah, service was uh, top notch. You'd buy the battery rate online, they took PayPal. Uh, yeah, easy peasy, and uh, they have a big selection and stuff. So, perfectly happy uh, with the service I got. So, yeah, if I ever needed another lead acid battery, I'd probably check these guys out first before I looked elsewhere. So, cool. All done charging, we can see. Only took 15 20 minutes. I was just thinking, how about we test the inverter? 
with my 150 watt torchier lamp. See how it works. And there you go. You might have heard the internal cooling fan for the inverter rev up for a second and then stop. It tends to do that. And you can see it puts on quite a bit of a load. It drags the battery down to one LED. If we turn it off, it still says one, but it might go back up a little bit by itself. Yep, there it says two. But I will keep it charging. And uh, yeah, I'll just keep it on the charger and um, pretty soon I'll try and get this thing on the uh, local buy and sell pages. See if I can get a hundred bucks for this. Um, I'm a little bit weary um, that I won't get that much. I hope I do. I would like to turn it around for a profit. If I end up not being able to get a profit for it, I guess I'll just keep it and keep using it. But there is the installation and testing of a new battery for my Xantrex X Power Power Pack 300 Jumper Pack. Hope you guys enjoyed and thank you very much for watching.